1994, a certain fast-paced bike racing game was unleashed to the gaming public, making use of sprite scaling, full motion video, a lengthy championship mode where you earned money to upgrade bikes, and the occasional dash of humor. Oh, and it didn't have any combat mechanics or licensed music at all. Yep, it's Cyclemania, the 1994 motorcycle racing game nobody remembers. Or if you do, you're probably like me and spent way too much time playing random frickin' DOS games over the years. Cyclemania was published by Accolade under their Accolade Sport label and was developed by Compro Games, a division of Compro Software based in Givat Shmuel, Israel. Is this the first Israeli game I've reviewed on LGR? I don't know, but it's one of the few I'm aware of, so that's gotta count for something. Compro games only lasted for a few years, but they did crank out games like Net Zone and Surface Tension before leaving computer games behind. Apparently, they developed some pretty awesome video streaming technology while making these games, and in the later 90s, reinvented themselves as Skyline Software Systems. Under this name, they developed various applications for the Israeli armed forces, as well as 3D visualization products like Terra Explorer. This Earth exploring program predated Google Earth by several years, which led to a huge failed lawsuit against Google in 2006. But whatever, back to Cyclemania, their first commercially released piece of software. The game box boasts box art, featuring what I assume is a human trying not to die while riding a bike. It also has a number four on it, which is a stroke of pure genius in my eyes. If you exist in the third dimension, you can turn the box around and look at the crap on the back. Real bikes, real roads, real competition. Hmm, you know, what is real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Inside the box, you get real cardboard. But that's just packaging. You also get the game on a certified real CD-ROM and a real manual filled with real information about this game, really. Install it and start it up, and you're greeted with logos, including that of Compro, which is a reference to the whole give me a place to stand and a lever long enough and I will move the world Archimedes quote. Once you reach the menu, some real mod music starts blasting from your real speakers. Okay, this is getting old. And you have the option to choose some options. Pretty self-explanatory stuff, and I don't feel like going into each option because that would be an incredible waste of my time, and why am I still going on about it? Just choose whatever race type you would like to play and play it. Quick Race and One Race are the same thing, except Quick Race you choose the settings in the Options menu, and One Race you choose the options before the race, where it actually makes sense. I guess Quick Race is handy if you ever only like to play on one track with one bike on one difficulty, but it's amazingly redundant when you think about it. When starting an actual race, you get to choose a bike from a list of six, although you also get a driver with the bike, each of which has a lame one-liner making sure that you hate whoever you pick. So if you want someone with a faster bike but don't like their attitude, that's just too darn bad. If you're in one race mode, then next you get to choose a track, kind of. Choosing this sets off a pre-rendered 3D cutscene showing a sleazy looking room with a sleazy looking shirtless guy sporting the most definitively 90s shaded polygons. You then get to watch him watch TV, consisting of short clips of random real life motorcycle wrecks. Um, I thought this was track selection. Switching the channels mostly just reveals a bunch of random wrecks. And it's not until you go through all of them that you see five track selection videos, each of which is narrated by some lady who is obviously way too excited to have this job. Desert heat. Feel the hot desert wind strike your face as you race your bike down the hot sizzling roads and treacherous turns of desert heat. Wow, those tracks sound absolutely exhilarating. If you can somehow contain your elation, choose a track and it's on to the race settings. You've got laps, starting position, race type, difficulty level, and handling assist options to choose from. The only thing that really needs explaining here is the race type. A friendly race is a simple race on a track with boring opponents, and an aggressive race is a simple race on a track with heavy traffic and boring opponents who may sometimes bump into you. Finally, you can practice, qualify, or just start the race, and you're off to full motion video land. As 
you can probably guess, the track itself is just video of a real-life road with some sprites laid on top of it. A similar effect was used in quite a lot of FMV games back then, dating all the way back to certain Laserdisc arcade games in the 80s. Sometimes this method is believable, sometimes it's not, and in Psychomania, I find that it gets the job done, and for a DOS game from 1994, it's not too shabby. The entire race takes place from this third-person perspective behind your bike with the dashboard down below, somewhat similar to Road Rash's layout. Well, unless you try the awkward map view, which shrinks the video footage down to Sega CD size. Another thing I just have to point out is that the viewpoint is a tad low, which means you, your opponents, and traffic tends to get in the way of you, your opponents, and traffic, resulting in some unavoidable crashes, simply due to the fact that you can't see what's going on. And each time you crash, you're given one of these random clips of a bike wreck from the TV earlier. It has no relation to the wreck you just had, so it's entirely pointless and deserves to be turned off under the visual effects option. Racing is incredibly straightforward. You accelerate, brake, and move left and right. There is no handbrake, no power sliding, no popping wheelies, it's just you moving forward. You earn points for accelerating and bumping into opponents, so that's something to do, I suppose. Depending on the difficulty level, you'll also have crap to avoid along the way, like your opponents, a few kinds of traffic vehicles, low-flying planes that do nothing but fly low, cows, horses, tires, oil slicks. You also have cops on bikes with their sirens wailing, but they don't seem to do anything any differently than regular traffic. I've never gotten busted, so I guess they just kind of ride along and abuse their siren. However, you can crash out of the race if you wreck enough times to deplete your damage meter. Doing this will call an ambulance to come by and run over your body, apparently so much that it's ground into the pavement or something and your game is over. And winning races is just as odd as the race doesn't exactly end once it ends. You get this race over message flying at you several times and eventually the race will just end. This confuses me. After the race, you earn some cash based on however many points you accumulated during the race. If you have the money, you can choose from a list of upgrades to soup up your current bike. Not that any of these actually do anything, at least that I can tell. Uh, seriously, the only one that seems to make any difference to gameplay is the engine upgrade, so you may as well just save all your cash for that. And that's it. You continue racing the same five bland tracks against the same bland opponents and earning the same bland points for the entire game, with some races having as many as 30 laps. <laughs> Can you tell I'm not particularly amused by Cyclemania? I mean, I suppose there is the novelty of racing on top of streaming video of a real-world road. A boring one, but a real-world road. And the controls aren't the worst. I mean, you know, once you get used to the awkwardness of the landscape and perspective, that is. It's just that there is nothing to keep me going once I've played those five tracks once or twice. There is almost no variation in gameplay, the upgrade system is broken, and the racing is just plain boring. And I like racing games. It's not that I don't like racing, it's just that this racing is... Ugh. If there were more of a combat element, or cops chasing you down, or people to run over, or actual worthwhile upgrades to get, then it could be awesome. In other words, if it were Road Rash, it could be awesome. But it's not. It's Psychomania. The game isn't awful enough to be so bad it's enjoyable, and it's not good enough to warrant any kind of recommendation. Psychomania is adequate at what it does. But that's not saying much.